This is Corey Willis with PPI, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. I'm Adam Blattenberg from Diesel World. Hi, this is Dan, owner of Dan's Diesel Performance. I'm Christian Roth of BD Diesel. I'm Braden Fleece, and you're listening to the Diesel Podcast. What is going on, Diesel Nation? We're excited to have you guys with us today on the Diesel Podcast. Today's guest we've had on before, Ben Shaddy from Dunright Diesel Performance is joining us. And he's been on over the years to talk about his race truck and Pro Street. And last time he was on, he was telling us about a addition to his business that he's doing where they're finding like low mileage vehicles that have been wrecked. And they specifically focus on the 2003 to 20 Ram trucks. And there's been some you know incredible things that they offer like a 2500 mile long block 67 Cummins or you know leather seats out of a Laramie or just hard to find parts or things that you would need if you were going to do a conversion and so we wanted to ask him how that's been but recently we were on Instagram and we saw a post that done right diesel performance had done with a new race vehicle and this car it's it's going fast and we wanted to ask him about transitioning from the truck that he had to this car, why he did it, what the setup is as far as the engine and the transmission and the chassis, and then goals that he has for it, what what he's shooting for. And then also, you know, like all diesel enthusiasts out there, we've been, you know, really antsy to see racing, be able to go to the track and and you know, as we're emerging from the pandemic and states are opening up and racetracks are opening up, you know, how excited he is to be able to take it out there and, and put on a show for everyone. So we're excited to to chat with him today and, and also see how his business is doing with with parts and engines and the transfer cases and, and, and all the different components they're offering for two thousand three to twenty Ram trucks. All right, let's get to the podcast with Ben Shaddy and learning more about his race car. Ben, welcome back to the, the Diesel Podcast. You've been a, a a regular on the podcast over the years it's always been great chatting with you about race trucks and parts and and, and things that are going on and i saw recently on uh, instagram or, or facebook that you have a brand new race vehicle and i wanted to to have you on to talk about it so welcome welcome back to the the podcast hey, thanks man it's uh it's uh, always a pleasure to to chat with you about what's going on so tell us about this car um it's a um 63 split window Corvette. It was originally, or it is a Wally's Troop chassis. Um, found it in a guy by the name of Dave Atkins in, in Michigan, was selling it as a roller. And uh, we kind of knew that the time, well, we had thought at the time, the time frame we had that building a new chassis was out of the question to be ready for 2020. But I guess if we would have had 2020 vision, um, we <laughs> actually have plenty of time with the, everything that's going on in the world. We could have built a new car, but I'm kind of glad we didn't. Um, it worked out um, pretty well and pretty happy with it. Um, it's uh, We've got an aluminum block, or actually an entire aluminum engine from Jeremy Wagler um, and the boys there at Wagler Competition. Um, still running, you know, the Carl Rossler transmission uh, Suncoast converter setup. But, yeah, it's uh, a good bit lighter, which is what we needed to hopefully push the envelope on, on some goals we have set. And, you know, we got, there's a, a couple, few other guys that's, that's really going fast and, and going to go even faster this year once, once things open back up. And um, we just want to make sure that we are putting ourselves in position to be as competitive as possible. Is it the, the main thing, like the difference between the race truck that you had and the car is just the weight and being able to, sort of could go to the next level with with speed due to you know being a lighter lighter platform yeah being i mean we're we're 800 pounds lighter um than last year which is a huge deal and then even sitting sitting in the car you know a lower center of gravity we've found a um a couple times testing here and it's even the, the, the truck was awesome it, it did a lot of cool things um for its time and and it, it's still a, a really gnarly ride, but I think um, for the next level, we, we're going to have to lose a lot of weight and and just get to a race chassis. And you know, even taking the car down the track the very first outing, to me, it was just it was a whole different feeling as far as you know safety. Even even if the car did get out of the groove a little bit, um, it wasn't riding like riding a bull like the truck was. 
um, <laughs> where you got a handful <laughs> steering wheel, you know, you can actually get the car, corral the car back to the center of the track and, and not be that big of a deal. Um, I think it's just the, the difference in, in being a true blown, you know, full blown race vehicle. What you you had mentioned, you know, the tracks and, you know, everyone, you know, especially enthusiasts, you know, that love drag racing and going to events or racing their own vehicle. And it kind of depends on the state a little bit, but, you know, people are like, man, I want to, I want to get out there. I want to go do this stuff. How has that been for you and, and your crew when you have, you know, a dedicated vehicle and, and racing and you've been racing for years and it's like, you just kind of have to hurry up and wait this year you know right right it's um it, it's been it's not been as tough because we kind of finished up when um when things started opening up so but I, I could imagine for the teams that were ready in march I'm, I'm sure they've been chomping at the bit um and you know the testing we've been doing has been you know private testing one-on-one stuff so it, it's not hurt us a whole lot but i can see where um, some of the other teams that, you know, like they were obviously ready before we were, um, I'm sure it, it, it's, they're probably getting antsy. I'm sure. Like late last year, everyone was really looking forward to what was going to happen with technology and platforms and just experience that people were, were having with race vehicles. And it's just crazy to think about that the, the technology, the power, you know, the the products have progressed so quickly that they need to be in different platforms to really take advantage of what they can do. It, it's almost it, it's almost shocking, but it happened. I don't want to say really quick, but it felt like quick how everything has just progressed. It was it was almost overnight, or you know, you know, when the the page turned. Um, and I don't know if you followed the, the Rudy's fall event, um, but, you know, Team PPEI came out there and and showed a next-level vehicle, and, you know, it's, it's a very advanced car, very nice car, and they showed up and, and did exactly what they said they were going to do. You know, they they put me out first, um, then they followed up with Firepunk, which, you know, I, I wouldn't consider us or Firepunk any, any chumps of the sport. Um, but th- that was the turning age of all of us knowing, hey, we need to be lighter, we need to be faster, we need to have more control of the electronics of the vehicle. Um, so I, I would say that was, that was definitely a turning point. Um, and, and I knew in my head driving home from North Carolina that our 800 to 1,000 pound heavier than the PPI car truck wasn't going to get it done. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's obviously when the, the turning point for us. Yeah. It's been, uh, it's been really awesome to watch and have you know, do podcasts like this one with you and be able to, to learn, you know, what's coming up and how things have, you know, jumped ahead. And I'm really excited to see, see the car make some, you know, passes go to events and that was one of the things that really jumped out to me about that picture is I saw it's a beautiful car and I saw the Amsoil logo on it and I thought I gotta talk to Ben I gotta see what they've got (laughs) what they've got cooking up but I wanted to ask you about um you know your your sponsors and and you know Amsoil being one of them is how they help you in in pursuing something like this and, and the support that they give you um, they give it, – it's just phenomenal the support that Amsoil does give, um, not only, you know, not only product or, or you know, financial help. Um, but I was I was on the phone the other day with one of their specialists, you know, discussing transmission fluid and stuff with him. Um, and we were talking about different viscosities and temperatures and whatnot. And, and they're actually going to blend a transmission oil for our operating range on the race car um, for several different reasons. Um, but that's that's the kind of help that we need to get to the next level, um, because sometimes it's not going to be the you know the off the shelf product or you know the off the shelf product is is wonderful, but it might take something just a little bit of a twist on it, um, you know, because I think that a lot of the goals right now are, are to get into three second zone, 200 mile an hour in the eighth mile. I'm, if if anybody racing a, a deal pro mod right now tells you that's not their goal, I would probably call them a liar. Um, so, 
but where I'm going with that is it, is it might take some extra, you know, it, turning over every rock, whether it's a, it's a fluid or, you know, it's a control of the vehicle. Um, it's, it's going to take a perfectionist and, and Amsoil, that's, that's what they are, is a, are perfectionists. They, they want to make sure that they produce not only the best product for what, for the racing application, but for the everyday. So, you know, to our semi, our, our, four-wheeler that pushes the car through the pits, you know, everything, um, they, they want to, they're pursuing to be the best lubricant money can buy. Well, and at those speeds, I imagine those small things make a, such a huge difference because of the power and the speed and the weight that every little thing could be in an advantage or, you know, might need to adjust or, you know, change something and, and see the results. So it's just, you know, we think about, you know, our, our trucks or what we're daily driving and we might not think it's a big deal for, you know, a little bit different blend of a fluid, but we're not doing or trying to do 200 miles an hour either. Right, in, right. In three right. seconds where I could, you know, or just extend the life of transmission or other parts of, of the vehicle where, you know, it allows you to, you know, race it more you have less you know costs or repairs or anything like that to to maintain the vehicle the uh the it's just i always get fascinated when i think about everything that goes into the vehicles like i love racing but also you know the stories behind it and i i've chatted with Levon once and he was talking about his race team and some of the other guys that are out there and how important it is and I wanted to ask you about yours is you know I know it's important but there's always a huge team behind you know the vehicle you know we think of the vehicle and the racer but I wanted to ask you about that part of it especially going from you know the truck to the car have you know the crew that you work with I'm, I'm sure they've been really excited but what's that been like working with, you know, the people that are on your team to get ready for this, this new venture in the car? It's, uh, it's been great. Um, as far as, you know, the team, whether it's the guys that, that work here at my, at, sh- at my shop with me, um, or, you know, we've teamed up with S and S motorsports, um, their hand on the fuel system, not only that, but, We've we've stepped out of my comfort zone, which um, well, I've always ran a factory Cummins uh, engine controller, and this year I made a decision to go to a, a Motec standalone system, not only for the engine but for the entire car. So Andrew, Luke, and Andre at SNS have really just been over backwards for us to um, to make sure that thing operated the way it, it should. I'm I, I'm still tuning the engine. Um, but they, they did all the setup, all the wiring, um, and they, and they did a phenomenal job. But where I'm going with that is, is when we showed up to our very first test session, SNS was on site. Um, Tony Durhammer or Hammer Tech Race Cars, he's there, he set up the chassis. He did all the retrofitting of the, of the engine into the chassis. Um, everybody was there. And I feel like if S and S wouldn't have been there, maybe our controls wouldn't have been as, as good as they were. But we we went there on the very first test session and, and did what we said we were going to do. Like it, the car went fast. We didn't we didn't try to kill anything, um, but we set some goals and we attained every one of them. But the the importance of attaining those goals were the people that were involved, and and I wouldn't call one person's job any more important than the next. But it took the whole crew being there was important, um, and that's you know it's just to accept the fact that one man can't do it all. I think as soon as you do accept that fact is when you start seeing some success. I imagine, yeah, I can I can see you know how important and how cool it is too to think of all those different people being there for your first testing session to just streamline it and save time and and to help. And that's what's, that's one of the really interesting parts of the racing world is knowing how much a lot of people put into the vehicle or the part or the tuning or setting something up. And it's like this well-oiled machine that just comes together for, you know, that pass or that race. 
And it, I know a lot of, of race fans, they like to hear that stuff. They like to know, you know, the behind the scenes, the things you, you may not see, you know, when you go to the track and you're sitting in the stands and, and you're watching passes. Right. Yeah. When, when they see you go down the track, you know, they, it's just like, Oh, that was, that would effort. That was very effortlessly. Mm-hmm. All the, you know, the crew, I'm tired. The crew's tired. S and S is tired. Tony's tired. Like it's, um, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's what really gets me going. Um, but it's, it is a lot of work for, you know, for the crowd to see the, the pass and it, and it works like it should. Um, it, it's just a lot of work to get to that point. One of the things, last time we had chatted, you told us about this business venture that you had. And I remember getting there was a stream of, of inquiries and, and messages that happened over like three or four months of people saying, Hey, what was that one episode you guys did about, because there was like a low mileage six, seven Cummins engine or this or that. And I think it was a lot of people that, uh, th- they had a project going on or some of them just wanted spare parts for things. But I wanted to spend a little bit of time on that. Have you tell us for any of our new listeners that what you're working on, you know, the name of the company, what, what you guys specialize in? Um, it's it's still done right diesel, um, and what we specialize in is uh, 2003 to 2020 Dodge slash Ram pickup trucks, uh, and we try to hand select them a little bit so that we have some higher miles stuff. It just depends on um, how you know how the vehicle was wrecked or or damaged, um, but most of the time we're we're trying to hand select these things so we have the Laramie or Laramie Longhorns or, you know, something a little higher end that's got the leather interior. And and what we're trying to do is recycle these trucks. Um, so if you if you do have an ST model truck, and, and this happens all the time, is by the leather interior. You know, the guy didn't want to spend another 20 grand on, on getting a Laramie, but he wants leather seats. Yeah. You know, we, we take the trucks all apart carefully. We don't try to tear up anything. And, and we recycle all the parts from it, whether the engine transfer case. Um, and we're having a lot of fun with it. It's, um, it, it. it's a little bit different, obviously a lot different than what we used to do. Um, but we are having a good time with it. And I feel like staying specialized into that because of our Dodge Ram knowledge, um, I feel like that we can provide people with, with good used parts. And, and we still do new parts, but you know, quality use parts is, is something that sometimes is hard to find. I was just thinking that like, I, I've spent time before trying to find something. Maybe it was like an interior panel or the center console thing. And really, I had two choices in the past. One was to go down to the dealership or call them or go on their website and order it. Or I had to scour the entire <laughs> the entire Internet and hopefully maybe find it and maybe not you know maybe the description wasn't correct and so i think it's really helpful to have it in one place where you know that that's what you guys specialize in so i don't have to sift through you know say like a a ram 1500 you know or 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 other other models that that ram may have or dodge may have is it's kind of organized into this you know 2500 3500 and there's information on the parts too. I remember seeing an engine once. I think it had like three thousand miles or twenty five hundred miles on it, a six seven. And it's like, it's so easy to find that. And and then you combine it with knowing you and Dunray Diesel Performance, and it's just this this connection of I feel confident. You know, ordering a part from you guys, ordering an engine, a transfer case, um, leather seats, whatever it is. And that's we want people to feel comfortable with what they're buying, and 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 I'm not going to act like we haven't ever sent anything out that didn't have an issue. But it's it's one of the things with used parts; it's, it's pretty cut and dry. Like if we have another one, we'll send you one. If you yeah. if we don't, we're going to refund your money. So, um, but we unless we physically can't, we run all the transmissions and run all the transmissions through the gears before the vehicle's ever taken apart. Um, so we're we're trying to get the best quality used parts out there as possible. It, it seems like a, a huge market, especially for, uh, I've seen this with people who are doing conversions or, you know, putting something into an older vehicle is they can spend a ton of time trying to find accessories or you know, things for the engine or whatever it might be. And I know they'll appreciate being able to, 
you know, jump on your guys' site, take a look. Maybe there's, you know, this, this, you know, water pump or, you know, whatever it might be, injection pump or full engine that they can get where, you know, the mileage. Yep. It's, and it's usually, you know, we do get a lot of conversion guys, you know, that's with, cause with the Cummins engine, um, it seems like they'll put it in and just about anything in the, you know, the wide array of years that it comes in, you can, it's nothing for a guy with a five nine to call. And maybe we don't have one that he needs or it's got a little higher mileage. Well, we've had guys buy six sevens cause they want the new motor anyway. And they still, you know, it will still work in their five nine truck. So, um, the versatility is, is pretty good. That's awesome. Yeah. It's been, it's been really cool to see you guys grow that and, I see, you know, on social media and posts, or we even see people, you know, talking like, "Hey, can you check out Dunray Diesel Performance um, for that?" So it's been really, really interesting to see. And I know, you know, like on YouTube, people are going to see your a picture of your car, and that's what's going to pull them in is seeing that. And so, if they want to check out updates on it, where where's the the like most up to date information people can find on the car and what you guys are doing? Um, the up, most up-to-date information on the car would be our, our social medias, the, the Instagram, Facebook. Um, as far as the used parts, um, the, our eBay store is actually the most update right now. Um, we do have some stuff working on in the, to get it linked to our website. and that, I'm hoping that's going to be about a month, a month and a half or so, so where they could just go to the site, um, and then if you find what you want, it'll, it'll be – um, it'll make model slick, but it'll obviously be mostly Dodge coming stuff, um, and then it'll take it take you to check out in our eBay store. Awesome! And when is when are you guys going to make another pass in the car? When's the next uh, event? Or we're going to be out this weekend, this this coming weekend. Um, uh, we're doing a private test one more time, and then uh, we will be at Jeremy Wagler's July 11th for the Diesel World uh, event. Oh, cool! Well, we'll definitely have to tune into that and. And see, it's it's awesome to see what what you have, uh, what you guys are working on in the platform. And like I said, it just it still amazes me that technology and power and what you guys are doing with diesel has progressed to the point that it has now. And I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm, I definitely have been <laughs> been kind of you know antsy and everything to watch some racing and see it. And so I'll definitely be tuning in and and see what you guys do. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, it's getting, Diesel Motorsports is getting, it's just getting, well, it's not just getting excited, but it's, it's heating quite a bit. And um, I, I really hope that it, that it takes hold and, and, and we have 10 more new cars getting built next year. I, I think that that would be something that really excites me is to see a lot of new builds and, and race car style stuff built for that. And, and of course, there's nothing wrong. I mean, the ET classes are, are full now too and, and that's that's very important as well to get either you know the experienced bracket guy or you know even maybe there's a younger kid that just got his license that wants to get his feet wet and get out there in the et class that's that's the beginning you know that's the beginning of that young man or, or woman's racing career um but i think it's important to get all of that seat time um and then you can see people you know filter up through the classes it doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. And there's been a lot of companies over the last three or four months I've, I've just chatted with, or I've reached out to people that I've known and just, you know, asked them how they're doing and how things are going. And, and they're like, you know, we're busy. There's, they're still building, you know, race injectors, race turbos, race transmissions. And, and once we see as an enthusiast, we see, you know, the next evolution or we see the next jump. I think people want to do that. And it, it, it does trickle down in the sense as well that like with, you know, the DPF equipped trucks is there's still parts and there's still tuning and there's still, you know, carb approved things that companies are working on to where the power levels of those are jumping up. So if you have a newer one and you do want to go out there and, you know, do bracket racing or just do different things, you can still, you can still do that. And then of course you got like the, you know, the five nines and the LB sevens and the LBZs and, and stuff like that, where, where, you know, those owners are racing. So it's just a really exciting time to see from top to bottom, the, the potential in the racing and what's happening. And I, I don't see it slowing down at all, especially once, 
you know, you guys start going to, uh, you know, head to head, you know, against each other and, and the times and the, and the speed that you guys are doing, more people are going to want to do it. I, I, I agree there. It's, it's, it's one of the things if, a, if it's in your blood or if you, if you've done it at racing, it's, it's something that just doesn't go away. Um, no matter really what's going on in, in the world, um, people's always going to find a way to get to the racetrack. Well, I appreciate your time today, Ben, chatting with us as always. It is fantastic, and I'll be keeping my eye out for you guys on, on, uh, or in July at the, the Waggler event. And, yeah, look forward to uh, we doing a recap after the season and, and seeing, you know, how, how everything came together and, and, and what you thought of the, you know, the car and maybe any changes you want to make and, and getting ready for 2021. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Don't forget, Diesel fans, if there's any show recommendations that you have, content, personalities, um, products that that we need to talk with someone about, have them on the show. Make sure and and send us a message on Facebook or Instagram. You can find us at The Diesel Podcast on Facebook or on Instagram. It's just at The Diesel Podcast. We get a ton of great show ideas from you guys and people that have done conversions or they have super clean, low mileage, older trucks and and you're a big fan of you know what they're doing or the build that they had, you know, let us know. We love to be able to bring that content to you guys. Till next time, keep the shiny side up.